In this video, I want to explain what is actually meant by a probability distribution. And I'm going to start off by talking about this in the discrete case. So here we're talking about a discrete random variable. And the example which I'm going to talk about here is imagine that we've got some sort of barrel or, or some sort of bag. And within that bag, there are a list of, let's say, balls. And they've got on them the numbers sort of 1, 2, all the way through to, let's say, 100. And uh, as I should say, the, these should all be the same size and they're the same frequency of each of these different balls. So let's assume that there are loads of these balls and then what we're doing is we are putting our hand in and we're going to take one of these out at random. So what we might like to think about then is if we took a ball out at random and we call the sort of value on that ball x, what would be the probability of that particular value actually occurring? So in this particular case where we're assuming that the numbers sort of 1, 2, all the way through to 100 are all equally likely, it's quite easy and we can sort of imagine that the probability of getting the value 1 is just 1 over 100. And the same for the value 2, that's just going to be 1 over 100. And for all the sort of numbers in between, this will also be 1 over 100. And then we sort of work all the way up to 100, which also has a 1 in 100 chance of being pulled out of the bag. Okay, so basically what we've got here is we've got a list of all the different values which our random variable, our x, can take on, and associated with each of those values is a probability. So this is a sort of mapping from the random variable value onto a probability. As I've sort of listed it here, it is in order, but we could also think of a sort of graphical way of illustrating this information in perhaps a slightly neater form. What we can do in the discrete case is we can essentially graph on our y-axis here something which we call the probability mass function. And what this is, is basically a value of the probability associated with each of the particular discrete values which our random variable can take on. So here we've got the value 1 and associated with that value there is a 1 in 100th chance of that particular value occurring. So it might have a height that looks something like this sort of yellow bar I've drawn here. And then sort of going up in order, then we've got the value 2 and that's got a probability of 1 in 100 of occurring and we can imagine drawing sort of another sort of 97 bars up until we get to the value 100 and then that's also got a 1 in 100 chance of that occurring as well. So this sort of graphical way of illustrating a uh, probability associated with each of the particular discrete values is the probability distribution for the case of a discrete random variable and in that particular case we call it a probability mass function and because it's a probability it has to have a particular property which is that the sum so when I write sigma here I mean the sum over all values of x which the random variable can take on the probability mass function associated with that particular value of x when I sum them all together has to sum to 1. So the idea with a probability mass function is that the values have to be non-negative and that the sum of all the probability mass function values over all values of x has to sum to 1. Okay, so that's easy enough in the discrete case. What about the case of a continuous random variable? Well, the case of a continuous random variable is pretty similar. There are a few sort of key differences though. So first of all, let's think of an example. And the sort of canonical example which is always given here is, let's imagine that we've got our population of, let's say, the UK. And what we're imagining here is we're thinking about individual's height. And so what we're doing here is we're taking a sample from that population, and what we're doing then is we're measuring that particular individual's height. And we're going to call that particular value of height, we're going to call that a random variable x. So what we might like to do is we might like to think, okay, well, a particular value of x, let's call it 1.73 meters, what is the probability of that particular value occurring? Well, actually, this is a bit of a tricky question because what do we actually mean by 1.73 meters? If we think about 1.73 meters as being the height to the closest centimeter, then associated with that, we could actually think about a particular probability value. But if we actually mean just the particular value, the exact value of 1.73 meters, then there's no one who is exactly 1.73 meters to you know, an infinite number of decimal places. So we'd actually have to assign to that a probability of zero. 
So already we can see that there is a slight difference in the way in which a probability distribution works for the case of a continuous random variable. And we need to clarify exactly how this is going to work for the continuous case. So the way in which we get around this is via a probability density function. So we're going to call that a PDF. And it's basically the continuous analog of a PMF, the uh, probability mass function for a discrete random variable. So what we can do here is we can, I'm just going to draw it and then I'm going to sort of explain it afterwards. So we might think that there is a, some sort of probability density function which looks something like this yellow line which I've drawn here, which might have a sensor around let's say something like 1.6 meters. So how do we interpret and how can we use this probability density function in order to work out something meaningful? Well, if we go back to our example here and we think about the case of 1.73 meters, what we might actually mean by that, as I said before, was that what's the probability that someone's height lies between 1.725 meters, is less than, let's say, x, which is less than or equal to 1 point, in this case, 735. Because that would be the upper sort of boundary for an individual to say that they were 1.73 meters than the nearest centimeter. So what we can do in the, in the sort of continuous case is we can use our PDF function to help us to work out what is the probability that an individual's height lies within this interval. And the way in which we do that is we essentially just go up from our particular values of x. So we've got 1.725. And I'm going to sort of over um, illustrate this by just so that we can see what's going on here. And the value of x here is 1.735 meters. So then what we've got here is we've got these two different values of the PDF and we've got this sort of area which is defined in between the lower and the upper case. And in the case of a continuous random variable with just one particular dimension, then it is the area which represents a probability. Again, the PDF here or the probability distribution is a way of sort of organizing probabilities. It's saying in this case, it's much more likely that an individual has a height that's between, let's say, 1.59 and 1.61 meters, because that's this sort of area here in the middle, than it is if we were to think about the probability that an individual's height lies between, let's say, 0.9 and 1 meter. Yeah, it's a way of providing some sort of hierarchy in terms of the probabilities. So in that sense, it is similar to the discrete case, because all we've done is we've sort of organized our probabilities in order of ascending values of the random variable. So in both cases, it's a way of organizing information. But in the continuous case, you just have to be a bit careful because it's not just a straightforward mapping of a value to a probability value, because that value always has a particular probability of zero. You can only think about a sort of range as being represented by a probability in the sort of continuous case. And again, just like the discrete case, we require our PDF, in this case the continuous PDF, to have an integral across all values of x, so the integral from, in this case, minus infinity to plus infinity, to be equal to 1. Because an integral, all it really means is, is a sort of sum of infinitesimal elements. So it's the sort of continuous analog of a sum. And again, because we're talking about probabilities, the sum of all of the sort of individual values of the PDF, these infinitesimal values, has to sum to 1. 